Hey guys, we're drinking coffee, squad talks over coffee. We're talking flywheel. Funnel, not so much. Flywheel, a big thing these days. HubSpot software lands with it, your sales marketing service does too. All right, coming to you guys with another episode of Squad Talks Over Coffee. I've got yeah. uh, Kevin Peterson, Dr. Peterson here uh, from the squad. He's got many, many titles. Uh, VP of Client Experience. You got it. Is the one we wrote these days. He's been yeah. creative director, kind of general manager, operations manager. All the things. All the things, all the things. Uh, this is Squad Talks Over Coffee. Kevin is one of the few non-coffee drinkers here. He usually has a tea. And today he's rolling with... I've got my uh, not endorsed uh, Kirkland Signature Sparkling Water, the lime variety. All right, a staple here, squad, staple. I've got a uh, Heine Brothers mug, been spending some time there, one of the few coffee shops on the east side, still still open, so mm. sad days, but good coffee. And uh, so we're gonna jump into a topic, we're gonna intro it on this session here, that has been around for a couple years, I'm almost so anticlimactic. I should just say what it is, Kevin. You can it's get to it. The flywheel, the flywheel concept from HubSpot. They killed the funnel a few years ago. It died. It's not really dead, Kevin. It's still out there. Some so, people are still talking about it, but yeah. HubSpot has moved on. HubSpot's moved on from it, and I understand why. And we've embraced some of that. There's still click funnels. There's still sales funnels, product funnels. It still makes sense in some situations. So we'll leave it at that. But we're excited to unpack the funnel. I mean, the flywheel, not the funnel, I just clearly <laughs> said that the funnel was gone. Okay, the flywheel, and we're going to dive into that uh, because we're going to be breaking it down over the next few weeks in terms of each area of the flywheel. And uh, Kevin, you want to take a stab at just yeah. kind of framing up just bigger picture? Yeah, so if you're familiar with marketing funnels, sales funnels, it's all about getting as many people in at the top and qualifying those leads until you get down to the sale. And then from there... Well, that's just operations problems, I guess. Like, hey, I, I, I close the deal and it's up to you guys to take it from here. Let me go find somebody else. And what HubSpot did was basically said, look, you, let's keep the momentum going. You, you sold someone on something. You spent the, the effort through your marketing to attract them mm -hmm. to, uh, to your organization, to your business, to the products and service you offer. Uh, you went through the effort of you know, delighting them and, and giving them a good experience. Let's keep that momentum going, uh, hence the idea of a flywheel. Let's say sell them something else, maybe. Exactly, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. They always said, uh, I don't know, you know, my mom always said that growing up. They, they say, you know, it's like the infinite source of wisdom. But, you know, they say it's easier to sell an existing client than it is to go out and get a new client. And that's what the funnel is all about, is new. Constantly the throughput of the next new client or customer in your world, uh, and then it kind of ends there. And I think the interesting thing about, do we have to talk about COVID anymore? Goodness gracious. The interesting yeah. thing about COVID <laughs> in the last few years has been it's forced folks to look kind of at some inside sales mentality yeah. at about how to work with their existing database, CRM. We've put a big focus on that in the last few years here. And that's some of the things that will impact more. Mm -hmm. yep. So with Kara's role that, that uh, Kevin's going to elaborate on is... We basically saw someone on our team who was very talented. She was a former VP of a bank. She had some marketing background. And we've been looking for this. Part of my vision brain for a few years has been looking for someone who would fit this, this mode. And it's somebody who is a marketer, so they can run programmatic, you know, uh, partnership-type marketing endeavors, uh, and has a sales kind of gene. She's a networker. She likes selling and, and uh, making the next deal, but also a very service kind of heart if you will. Uh, being in a bank, I don't know how you can do that, you know, and run a bank without that, uh, you know, uh, in your <laughs> in your arsenal. Mm -hmm. So she came in with this unique set of skills and uh, having been with us for several months and, and uh, doing really well, we kind of put it out there to her and said, you can continue on as you're, as you're doing. And, um, you know, as a DPM, Director of Partner Marketing, um, there's a path of business development if you want to go that. Well, this is this new role mm -hmm. that we've called, you titled it, Kevin. Yeah, What's it called? So Director of... Uh, Connections and Connection, Development. Director of Connections and Development. Yeah. And so in that role, she is overseeing our marketing. So she's got that attract side of the flywheel down. And then um, out there engaging with folks, networking. She's come to us with a bit of a network of herself and of her own. And so she's uh, engaging people in sales and um, you know hearing their needs, sitting in discovery meetings, help them put proposals together, but then even carrying that through. Some of those are projects that other people are touching and managing, but some of those are things that 
uh, that she's fulfilling. And so it's really come full circle for us, no pun intended on the flywheel, but for to have someone in that role that has filled, it's, a, it's something we haven't identified all this time, but we felt it. And we sort of backed into identifying that that role based on the skill set that she brought into the team, and it fits perfectly uh, along the level. It does, and I think you're a master of the pun, so let's not, let's not I do what lose I can. that. Yeah, you I do what I can. So. Yeah, but Kara's role. I mean, again, so many of the things we've done in the last few years. Um, you know, we wanted to embrace the flywheel. I don't know that we just set out and said, "All right, with that in mind, let's do X, Y, and Z." But we've kind of moved towards some of these things. And we wake up a couple years later, and we've just got this great alignment with it. Right. And I think uh, some of the even campaigns that we're looking at doing, we've got a campaign going right now called the Ripple Referral Campaign. That's kind of an inside sales um, mentality of getting out with our customers, uh, getting referrals, you know, handing off a gift card for them to go do the same thing in their business. We've got another campaign going called the Website Hosting Review. Mm-hmm. That Care is going to sit in the the seat of basically running that, and that's. You know, we've shot a video on that and promoted that a little bit. You'll see more about it in, in coming months. But we've got all these websites we've built over 14 years of being in business, and we interact with a lot of them. We do hourly support work. We do some hourly package work. We have some on partnerships, some on you know programmatic type um, deals, some with just you know ad and SEO campaigns. Maybe all that being said, we have several who just host with us, and it's kind of crazy that over the years we haven't reached out once a year and said, "Hey, come on in for like a website hosting review." Like we. We host one of your most important, you know, marketing assets, and um, it's been three years since we talked to you about that. Mm-hmm. So it's just kind of it's, it was yeah. a fail on our part. Yeah. You know, the clients weren't calling and knocking down our doors to come in and talk about it. But you know, you do that with other things like your your you know financial finances, your investments, your insurance. You review them. I mean, heck, people come out a couple times a year and service your pool if you got a backyard right. pool. Right. And so it makes sense that we would have that. So uh, Rachel and Carrier on the team would be kicking off a website hosting review process to have folks in. Say, hey, here's what we do with your website and your hosting and how we serve you. And here are all these other things that we could offer you yeah. that some have just come out in the last year, two years, three years since yeah. we did your last website project. So, And beyond that, as we embrace the flywheel just as an entire company, not everybody on our team is in a face-to-face sales role. We tell everybody we're all a part of the sales team. At the end of the day, we're all out there trying to help people solve their marketing problems or their business mm-hmm. development problems. So that expresses itself in many different ways. So on a project, we've been very intentional about the handoff from the sales into operations and understanding what is that, how does this client find us, what are their needs, so we can help sort of foster that relationship. And then we're helping them to see the next opportunity. So we got your website done. Uh, maybe you need local ally. Maybe you need some online reputation management. Uh, you maybe, know what? Maybe maybe you need maybe a little need a little swag. Little swag. You, you, you know, we helped you with the branding project, mm-hmm. and you've got a team that you need to uh, to suit up and and get out there with with your new branding. Um, you know, we're we're always looking to help lead people towards the next opportunity, and not just assume that oh they just need that video, they just needed uh, a marketing campaign put out, uh, if they come to us, if we've developed that relationship, we feel like we owe it to them to help them be faithful stewards of their organization and lead them towards the next thing that will solve their problems. But that it requires us seeing the big picture, understanding why they came to us in the first place, uh, and just owning that relationship uh, through the entire process of the Bible. Absolutely. We have one more position that we've created that I want to talk about briefly, because we're going to have these folks on. Care is going to be on one of the episodes. Rachel's going to be on one of the episodes. Alex is going to be on um, and because we want to get to the flywheel, we haven't mm-hmm. fully broken down the flywheel yet. Sure, sure. The other position we created during this uh, last really eight, 10, 12 months, um, everything's the other day. It was the other day. day. We we're just talking about the other day. So, is is a sales support position? Uh, it's, it's actually agency support specialist is the title of the position, uh, but it's about 50, 60 percent sales support, some squad marketing kind of experience. You know, what do you experience when you engage with our brand, coming into our office, our gifts? Our quarterly review process, uh, this position has been integral to that, and general office management kind of things, a little bit of accounting, all from an uh, experiential you know, uh, standpoint is, is, is a big part there. The sales support piece, though, has been huge in how we've used the tools. HubSpot, um, you know, we're a, a gold partner, almost platinum, very close to platinum. Very close, Kevin, very close. <laughs> um, and... You know, as, as we've adopted and embraced that tool and went further and further with it, it just aligns, obviously, with the funnel. Um, and with the flywheel, the funnel in the past, and these positions have just been become clear that hey, this would fill this gap. This would really help us to use this this uh, hub within HubSpot 
mm-hmm. more effectively. So again, we'll have Rachel Lovecare on the show. For now, I'd like to just, you know, in this overview video of the flywheel, I want to break it down. So yeah. the key concept is it's it's spinning. Yeah. The, the thing in the middle is the customer. Like we we've we've got a customer now. We've we've attracted, which is one part of the flywheel. Engage is another part of the flywheel, and delight is the third part of the flywheel. Mm-hmm. Those all, you know, interestingly enough, line up with marketing, sales, and service. Mm-hmm. Uh, turns out that's what many of us do. We right. market, we sell. How are we speaking to their audience? How are we selling and transacting business? And how are we serving those clients operationally yeah. and from a customer service standpoint? So yeah. the, uh, the flywheel lines up with that. The marketing aligns with the attract, the sales with the engage, and the delight with service. Uh, turns out HubSpot's really smart uh, and their software aligns with it as well. <laughs> so we've been pro users of the marketing hub for a decade, maybe a little longer than that. The last few years, we said, you know, we should take the next step in the sales hub, and we went from sales starter to sales pro, got access to some great new tools that we'll break down when we talk about engaging, uh, you know, our, our customer base and, and prospects. And then the most recent addition is we added the service mm-hmm. pro hub mm-hmm. uh, to where we can get some cool things that Kevin has actually a rock on. Yes. Uh, yeah. Net promoter score surveys yeah. that we're going to yeah. start incorporating. So. Yeah. So for for that, and we can work our way backwards, you know, as we think about uh, delighting folks, how do you know if you've done it uh, if you don't ask, right? And so looking to implement Net Promoter Score, it's essentially we just ask the question, would you recommend us to a friend or colleague? And then they give us a score, and based on that, we know whether or not they're a promoter uh, or they feel neutral, or they might be a, a detractor. detractor, in which case... We've got some work to do, and we want to follow up and see how we. I think there was one of those one time, one year. Yeah, Yeah, somewhere out there. Yeah, Yeah, we've never met any of those folks, Um, and so putting tools in place to help us measure and uh, and keep tabs on things, especially when you're moving a number of projects through. You know, sometimes you forget to slow down and ask, "Hey, how'd it go?" Uh, And so, have we delighted? We've got you in. Have we delighted? Can we uh, expect your business again in the future? Because that's always our goal: is to keep helping people solve their problems. Uh, but we got to know. We got to know where they stand. So if you're, um, you know, a client out there, and um, a prospective client, uh, just another business who's, who's looking to go down this road, you know, sales and marketing. It's 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 clear. People have, have said for years they got to work together. Mm-hmm. That's why we've talked for years about marketing. Yeah. What's new is to me is this, this service aspect, this operational aspect, that has become far more prevalent. In how do we to align operations mm-hmm. as part of our brand experience, our service experience. So, I mean, you sitting in the seat here of being in charge yeah. of all that, yeah. you know, kind of, yeah. is there any, anything that you would share, any paradigm shifts, any, yeah. anything that you're seeing as people are kind of opening up to this? Oh, okay, yeah, we we should yeah. embrace this. This is, yeah. you know, maybe it should have been clear for years. You know? Yeah, yeah, I think, uh, you know, the seat that I sit in is unique and has shifted over the years at the marketing squad. Where, where personally here, I'm in the biz dev meetings. I, you know, help lead operations, sitting in the marketing in the marketing meetings, mm-hmm. and so I can see how all those things connect. Uh, and that's really leading where we're trying to lead our clients is to help them see the full picture. And you know, these are not all individual roles on your team. You want everyone on your team to understand that uh, if we aren't delighting, we're not getting them back mm-hmm. through. Um, and so. We have embraced that as a team, and we're trying to put systems in place that help us uh, as a team to not just see narrowly into mm-hmm. our into our uh, individual roles as they're originally outlined, and see us all in that in the role of delighting and then turning them back into a, a mm-hmm. customer again and again. Yeah, because otherwise, you, I mean, you see businesses all the time that are very solid. Yeah, you know, very like we do this over here, yeah, this over there. Yeah, and it just when I look at even the image of that that flywheel, yeah. I mean. You, yeah, you want it spent all yeah. the time. Yeah. And if one area is yeah. ain't, ain't working, yeah. then you know you're going to have friction there, yeah. and you're not you're going to have it spun and it stopped, it's mm-hmm. spun and it stopped, or it's barely spinning, or we yeah. can't get the momentum to get it around. Yeah. And so uh, it's a nice visual. Um, I mean, I, I, when you watch a HubSpot video on this, they go, "We didn't do this just to do it." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, we yeah. you know we thought about this. It made sense. The concept made sense. It aligns with the software. Yeah. And uh, I just think it's a, it's a cool concept. It's taken me a while to grasp, but I'll be honest yeah. with you. Yeah. 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 I don't know about it. it well, and, and the challenge, I feel like, to truly keep the momentum 
is to reduce friction uh, internally on your team. So as you think about your organization and your attempt to attract and gain to delight people is how can you uh, break down those silos and remove that friction. So for us, there's, you know, uh, we know, uh, we follow those leads. HubSpot allows us to see how someone came to us. And so we have an idea of how they found out about us. Mm -hmm. And then in sales, a lot of the sales conversations start with, hey, how'd you hear about us? Especially if people call in, mm -hmm. it's 2022, but people still pick up the phone and we get call in. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the first questions we ask is, how do you hear about us? Uh, a lot of times they say, well, I Googled, you know, digital marketing Louisville or whatever it might be. And so right there, uh, sales is understanding how marketing mm -hmm. has supported them. And then from that, uh, sales is connecting with operations to say, hey, here's this client. Here's some things you should know about them. Here's, you know, some, uh, uh, some challenges that they may face or you may face in this project. And so we've tried to remove, you know, internally in our and yeah. how we operate as a company, uh, those barriers that would kind of put some kinks in the operations and, and make the wheel grind and stop. Absolutely. And, and Kevin's been a, a leader in the business and doing this and that his approach to inside sales and, and kind of that next thing, the next thing that serves you well, that makes sense, that moves your brand and business mm -hmm. forward. Our tagline is tell your story, grow your business. We're looking for folks who want to do those two things. And as Kevin sits in that seat, he's been leading our team to where, I mean, we had a period a few weeks ago where more deals were created from the operations team than from the three, four people who were focused on selling all the time. Yeah. And that's, just, that's, that's something. I mean, we've built a little bit of this inside sales culture the last few years and to see it get to the point where I look up and, and uh, that many deals were created by yeah. just DPMs listening to client needs in the next partner meeting, um, you know, uh, Kara uh, hearing the next project off of a project, Kevin yeah. seeing the next opportunity after we finished a logo branding that the person naturally wanted to, to progress into a website or a yeah. video so everybody's on the sales team yeah absolutely Everybody. absolutely even uh taylor and daria <laughs> which we do have we've got taylor over here shooting as usual but we also have dario who's going to be stepping up and in house to uh to be replacing taylor as he and brooke are uh the members of the team for years we just announced this recently in a video i mean the email that went out but they're heading to leon not lion not lion france uh, I made that mistake like I did many times. Lyon, France, to be a part of a, a church plant community over there with uh, locally through Sojourn Church here in Louisville. So exciting stuff for the Bishkis. Taylor's done a fantastic job with us over the years. Yep. And uh, it's pretty cool that he's getting this fit side by side with Dario, who's going to come in and uh, pick up where Taylor left off. So we're looking forward to all those leads that are going to come from France. Absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah. Inbound marketing is huge in uh, France. <laughs> Well, we're excited to kind of jump into the next episodes coming up. Like you said, we'll get into attract, engage, and delight aspects of the flywheel with uh, three different folks with uh, Alex, Kara, and Rachel. Not in that order, probably. Let's do it. There we go. So, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Squad Talks Over Coffee. It's, it's great to have uh, that. That yeah, Kevin good. Peterson on. He's going to be hosting one of these soon, I believe. Um, yeah. It is the office. So, peace.